It has finally arrived. 114 days after I ordered it, the Snapmaker 2.0 is here. And I'm ready to get it out of the box and put it all together. The Snapmaker 2.0 is the most funded technology project on Kickstarter. At least that's what their website says. And there's a lot of people that waited a lot longer than I did for theirs to arrive. But now that it's here, let's get right to building it. When mine arrived, the box was in pretty good shape. And that's not bad for something that was shipped from China. There was one little rip in the box, but that was only on the outer shipping box and didn't go any further than that. Many others who have already received their machines have mentioned what a great job Snapmaker has done packaging these units for shipping. Now that I have mine, I can see for myself that they really did put a lot of effort into the presentation of this machine. Each box is clearly labeled, and it's clearly all put together with great thought and attention to detail. So what's in the box? Let's start with the tools and accessories. Since I've heard good things about these tools that are provided, this is not your typical cheap set of tools that comes with most products that require assembly. The tools provided with this are of a quality that one might expect with something that costs this much money. The wrenches are powder coated and labeled. The cutters have nice soft grip. And the screwdriver has quality interchangeable bits with magnetic attachment to keep them from coming apart while using them. Though I found out later this doesn't always work as intended. The instruction booklet is really easy to follow and has full color, high quality images that make assembly an easy task. Do I sound like I should be working in the Snapmaker sales department? Well, that's only because I'm actually really impressed with the product they produced. The first step is adding the feet to the bottom plate, followed by adding two linear rails to the platform. It's important that the sliders on each rail are well aligned before attaching the platform. Also, these screws should not be completely tightened yet. Just get them 90% in, and they'll be fully tightened in a later step. Now attach this to the base plate. The base plate has grooves in it that the rails should sit in. Make sure the rails are properly seated in these grooves before attaching it with the screws. With that done, now we can fully tighten those screws we left loose before. Next, add the Z-axis holders and the touchscreen holder. Time to add two more linear modules. These have screws that mount through the Z-axis holders, as well as some that attach under the bottom plate. These screws should also be left a little loose until later, so just tighten them in most of the way. With all that done, now manually move the platform forward. Be gentle with it, but you do have to use a bit of force to move it. The same goes for the Z-axis sliders. Now we can attach the last linear module. Once that is on, now we can fully tighten those screws for the other linear rails. This part was a challenge. You need to manually move the Z-axis all the way to the top, but it's important that you move both sides at the same rate. Once that's done, you can now add the converters. Follow the cabling diagram carefully. You don't want these cables getting caught up in the sliding bed. Once I had all the cables in, I used some zip straps to tie them under the base plate. The next step is the controller. Like everything else on this machine, it's really easy to add. Four screws and it's ready to go. Now just plug all the cables into their spots. Once you open the dust plugs, you can see the label that shows where everything goes. Now we can add the touchscreen and the power supply as well. And that's pretty much it. The machine's ready to go. Now you just need to decide what function you want to play with first. For me, since I do a lot of woodworking, I was really excited to try the CNC function. For that, simply add the spoil board and the CNC module in whatever order suits you. And now for the exciting part. Time to power it on and get to work. Snapmaker provides a test file and some material. This will make a little phone holder. I won't go through every step here or this video would end up being quite a long one. The manual provided has detailed instructions on how to set this all up, but I will skim over the basics and show you how it went for me. To get started, first connect to Wi-Fi. Now they're kind enough to remind you to use your safety goggles, and this is no joke as you'll see later. I already have my own safety glasses, so I'll use them. But the Snapmaker does come with a set, as well as some that are designed for use with the laser. It's time to attach the material to the center of the CNC carving platform. Now follow the steps to calibrate the bit height and set the work origin. And now you're ready to go.
And here's why you need safety glasses for this task. This piece that just flew off missed my face by a couple of inches and it was moving fast. I think what happened here is that I had the bit height calibrated a little too low and the tabs that are meant to hold the work in place ended up getting cut too thin and when the spinning bit tried to dig into the piece it tore it out, swirled it around for a bit and then flung it towards my head. I paused the job to see what went wrong and after realizing what happened I started the job back up again since the larger pieces were still holding down well enough to finish the job. And I can see now that the bit was definitely too low, as it's starting to cut into the spoil board just a bit. This CNC function is definitely the messiest of the three. This is the chunk that went flying. Somewhere along the way it smashed into pieces. So the phone holder is not 100% perfect, but it doesn't fit my phone anyway. This was just a good starter project to test the CNC function. Now I want to test the laser function. Snapmaker provides a test file for this as well. After changing out the CNC spoil board for the laser engraving cutting platform, and then swapping out the CNC module for the laser module, I ran through the calibration steps and started to cut out the test project. And just for fun, I added our logo to one of the panels. The laser module also has a camera in it, so you can take an image of what's on the bed and then place your design exactly where you want it to be. To test out the camera, I added a label and our logo to the holder for the palm sander. I plan to use this feature a lot in future projects. Now it's time to test out the 3D printing. Each function has its own bed and module. So I removed the laser module and the bed and added the 3D printing module and the heated bed. The Snapmaker has a built-in auto bed leveling function. So after I did that and calibrated everything, I printed the same thing that almost every other person who owns a 3D printer would print, the Benchy. For those that don't know, the Benchy is used because its design has a number of things that a 3D printer can struggle with and it allows you to see how well you've calibrated your machine. And things like overhangs and arches and slopes that are all used as signs to show how well the machine is set up. This Benchy I printed with the fast settings and it turned out pretty well. I'm not planning to use the 3D printer to make fancy models that have to look super clean. Mine will be used for shop related things like tool holders and adapters and things that hold other things together. Though I do want them to look nice. I'm just not overly concerned about little blemishes here and there. Now that I've tested all three functions, what do I think of the machine so far? Overall, I couldn't be much happier about the Snapmaker. If anyone were to ask me, would I recommend someone else buy it? I would say that if it's within your means to do so, then I would 100% recommend getting one. With the three functions of this machine, you can literally make just about anything you can think of. But there are some things I would change if I could. For one, the fan on the power supply is fairly loud. Even if you're not currently printing or cutting anything, the fan's still going 100%. Mine's in my shop, so being moderately loud is not such a big deal. But this may not be the best thing in a small apartment or something. Plus it'll make a lot of dust with the CNC function. But that can't really be helped. An enclosure would be a good investment. I plan to build an enclosure for mine as soon as I can. Another small complaint is the time it takes to swap between functions. And that's mostly changing the bed. There are a lot of screws used in the bed, and maybe there's a way to make it a little faster, but that's a pretty small complaint. The Luban software that it comes with is very functional, but it is a bit limited for 3D printing. Another slicer software might be worth looking into. I think I'll do a little digging and see what software is best for 3D printing. If you have any suggestions, please put them in the comments below. I also plan to set up a webcam so that I can monitor my jobs remotely. Some tasks can take several days to complete, so it'd be nice to have something to keep an eye on it. I'm going to start making some tool holders for the French cleat wall using the snap maker. I've got some great ideas that'll hopefully look good on the wall. Click here if you want to see some of the tool holders that I've already made for the wall.